Congratulations on completing the PI primer and stacking portion of the series. We are now ready to embark on a new journey together, exploring the power of PixInsight's post-processing universe. Let's prepare master files for further development. I've opened an OSC master, NGC 7023, the Iris Nebula. It's available in the Image Files folder of the DVD and via this link. For the record, it's comprised of 16 hours of 900 second exposures at F9. The auto stretch reveals a beautiful image, though not without typical DSO issues. While acquired under dark skies and flat corrected, it exhibits gradients and a fair amount of background noise. If you shoot from less than pristine skies, take heart. Perfect data is an elusive beast. Thanks to the screen transfer function, we can perform initial repairs and enhancements while an image is in a linear state. To begin, we'll want to crop unusable portions of the image away. Once dead zones and the worst of light fall off are eliminated, computations for the histogram and other functions will be more accurate. Meet the dynamic crop process under geometry. I begin by holding down the left mouse button and dragging the cursor to frame the image. Click inside and drag if you need to move the entire box. You can also define a new center and drag the box to it. Otherwise, float the cursor over a side or corner until you see the tiny gray squares. Engaging the left mouse button, drag an icon to the desired position and release. Zoom in to refine its placement. If you need to rotate the box, place the cursor outside of the image but within its window. See the cursor icon change for rotation? You can also do that here or reset the angle to zero. Remember, you can do a full reset here. As this is a dynamic interface, you'd need to click the red X if you wished to cancel out of it. Let's include these artifacts in our crop. When satisfied, click Execute. Undo to try again. Cropping a master is fine for OSC, you say. What about the multiple masters of monochromatic data? Won't cropping before final assembly of an LRGB ruin their registration to one another? Thanks to new instances, no. And again, cropping early is preferable. Let's skip ahead a moment. Here's a master luminance and chrominance of NGC 253, the Sculptor Galaxy, also available on the disk or by download. As the chrominance has significant dead zones, I'll use it as the reference. With the size and position of the crop box defined to my liking, I create a new instance. Only then do I apply dynamic crop to the chrominance. Next, I apply the new instance to the luminance with precise registration being maintained. The same would be true for cropping individual L, 
R, G, and B masters. Before leaving geometry, let's also meet the fast rotation process. It provides an easy way to mirror flip or rotate an image to your liking. While there are times we'll recommend waiting to combine monochromatic R, G, and B frames into a chrominance, we know you've waited with bated breath to see how to do that. The channel combination process is found under channel management and couldn't be easier to use. While it supports several color spaces, here we select RGB, assign the appropriate images to their corresponding channels. Apply global and here's our trichromic RGB master. Unlinking channels in the auto stretch may yield an improved appearance. Also found under channel management processes is channel extraction. This is as good a time as any to make you aware of it. Channel extraction looks identical to channel combination, but is its inverse. If, for example, you wanted to split an image into its separate components, you'd simply apply. Uncheck the channels you don't need. This would be an ideal way of creating a pseudo-luminance from an OSC image.